Welcome everybody to Red Hat Travel Channel. Today's video is about our recent long weekend in San Francisco. It was my first time in the city and I was really confused how, why. I had never been there before, it's only two and a half hours direct flight from Vancouver where I live. Anyway, we spent three and a half days in San Francisco area and I'm going to show you all the beautiful places we saw, all the delicious food we tried and why I like this city so much. For the first two days we rented a car and drove to Silicon Valley, made a quick stop at Twin Peaks and no, it's not a scene of a David Lynch TV series, it's just an observation desk with one of the most epic views of the city. Then we went to Stanford, one of the most prestigious universities in the USA. I was surprised that the campus looks more like an Asian monastery than a modern educational facility. Stanford alumni have founded Google, Nike, Netflix, LinkedIn, YouTube and many other famous companies. The territory is enormous especially when you view it from the Hua Tower. Admission to the tower is free, but you must register online. The local two-story bookstore is also very impressive. You can buy here any branded souvenirs you can imagine. What I liked most about Stanford was Papua New Guinea Sculpture Garden. Dozens of traditional artworks were created here in a small park by a group of native artists in 1994. The wood for the totem poles was imported from Papua New Guinea and the stone was delivered from Mono Lake, California. If you like more classical art, Stanford has an entire garden with sculptures by famous French sculptor Rodin and free art museum nearby. We couldn't miss the Computer History Museum in Silicon Valley. They have an interesting collection of prototypes, wires, microchips, billboards, historical references and lots of informative videos. My favorite exhibit is the Housewives computer for writing down recipes. Too bad none of them were actually ever sold. You can also trace the history of the 150 most popular programming languages at the chart and sit in a self-driving car. I'm not an IT person, but I really like this museum. There are many campuses of technological companies in the valley. From the roof of the Apple Visitor Center you can see its ring-shaped headquarters and have a cup of coffee with cute latte art. We spent a few minutes there and then went to the coast to meet a spectacular sunset. We had dinner in the town of Carmel. All restaurants there were booked for the entire evening. We were very lucky to find a seat behind the bar at some Spanish cafe. And we spent the night at Pacific in Monterey. Carmel by the Sea is a small, charming beach city. It is known for its delicious restaurants, art galleries and fairy tale cottages. More than 20 of them were designed by the self-taught architect and built Hugh Comstock. He was inspired by children's tales like Alice in Wonderland and Brothers Grimm. You can find these houses in historical hill district just east of the downtown center. The city center of Carmel also looks pretty much like a fairy tale. You can walk around and search for cute statues, check out the churches and library, find the most unusual souvenirs, admire paintings and street art, enjoy Italian pasta, smell the flowers, drink hot chocolate with a fresh cinnamon bun, or just chill on the beach. In Carmel it's kind of special. White sand, blue sea, tranquility, paradise. As good as it was in Carmel, we had to keep going. We drove along the Monterey coast with its rocks, waves, wind and picturesque scenery. Continued on the 17th mile private road, you have to pay for the entrance. But you see a bird island, private residences and golf courses, a cheddar forest, bonsai trees and many breathtaking views. We also had a Mexican lunch there at one of the golf courses, which I did like, so I won't mention it here. Better eat somewhere at Carmel. The coffee at the Verve Coffee Roasters I can recommend, they have several locations along the coast. On the way to San Francisco, I saw something gigantic on the beach by the highway. It was a sea elephant. He crawled quickly toward the ocean into the sunset, then he stopped suddenly, arched his back, growled loudly and amused the audience. I had never seen a sea elephant before, it was one of the highlights of the trip. For sunset we stopped at an incredible place. I guess every sunset by the ocean is special, but this one was so magical and colorful that I dreamed of staying there forever. Just an hour later we parked the car in the heart of downtown San Francisco and prepared for another day. 
In San Francisco we had a serious agenda and planned to see and try as much as possible. We started with one of the tourist spots, Pier 39. It's part of a fisherman's wharf with restaurants and souvenir shops. The most popular attraction here is the sea lion colony. They moved to this pier a few years ago, and you can easily watch how they are lazing around, dipping, diving and barking at each other. There is also an incredible view of Alcatraz. We didn't have time for that iconic place, but you can book a tour and spend half day in this former prison. Russian Hill is another place with outstanding views of San Francisco. Famous Lombard Street, claimed to be the crookedest street in the world, is located here. This one block section has eight hair pink turns and a lot of tourists. We had lunch at the Buena Vista Cafe, where Irish coffee was introduced to the US for the first time. Then we took an Uber to San Francisco City Hall. It's a beautiful building and you can take a free tour inside. From City Hall we walked to Painted Ladies, another popular attraction, and accidentally found a small charming square with delicious coffee. Over 40,000 Victorian-style houses were built in San Francisco at the end of the 19th century. Some were destroyed by the earthquake, but a lot of them still remain. The most famous representatives are the Painted Ladies. And finally, we got to the Golden Gate Bridge. Don't ask me how many pictures I took, the bridge is awesome! We didn't limit ourselves to the views from the Welcome Center and hiked the trail along the coast to Baker Beach. I'd say it's a must-see place in San Francisco, especially at sunset. Our dinner at Peruvian restaurant was to die for. Many thanks to my local friends for the recommendation. And I also want to recommend you our hotel in San Francisco. It was really great and not very expensive. On our last day in San Francisco, we had breakfast at La Pizarra Cafe. It was delicious and the portions were so big that we had to skip lunch. My biggest surprise was Chinatown. In most cities, it's usually not a pleasant district, but in San Francisco, it's bright, clean and beautiful, also quite authentic with Chinese restaurants, shops and typical architecture. It is the oldest of all in North America. Next to Chinatown, there is a financial district. I especially liked Salesforce Park there, a giant living room with dancing fountains, grassy lawns, 600 trees and many plants. You can get there by gondola or elevator, admission is free. There is also a children's playground, an amphitheater for 1000 people and picnic tables. If you are in the area, also take a walk along the waterfront overlooking the Bay Bridge, past Rincon Park to the ferry building and grab something tasty inside it. To Maritime Historical Park we took a ride on a cable car. Just like years ago, they are still manually operated. All cabins are open and you can even ride standing on a special platform outside. In addition to historical ships, swimmers and a nice park, at Aquatic Cove there is a real port nearby and another very tempting place, Girardelli Square, home to some of the world's best chocolate. Girardelli chocolate was founded in San Francisco by an Italian chocolatier in the mid-19th century. You can buy sweets here and have some ice cream. And don't miss the Palace of Fine Arts, a beautiful piece of Roman Greek style architecture that was built for the 1915 exhibition. It's free, it's nice and it's very windy there. We also Check the small Yoda fountain in Presidio Park nearby and took a cab to delicious Japanese restaurants in Raku. Their signature boxes are something out of the world, I highly recommend you this place. And that's it, that was the end of our amazing long weekend in San Francisco. We'll definitely go back, that's a great city to explore. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more adventures. See you!